to talk about the barrel hardness test number two I did for AK barrels. I did one test a while back because a long time ago, about four or five years ago when I started building rifles, I had a problem with an American made barrel that bent on me. My very first kit I purchased from AK Builder, it came already head spaced, ready to go other than you have to push the barrel pin out, push the barrel out of the trunnion, put the trunnion in your receiver, rivet it in, push the barrel back in, re-head space it, then put the pin in. That was fine and dandy, everything worked great, and I thought, whoo, pat on the back, awesome. I want a little bit more of a challenge. I went with a headspace kit initially because I was a little skeptical about, well, maybe I'll screw everything up, won't get it straight. You, you know, the old stories of the old wassers and canted sights, and so like, I'll screw it up. Wasn't real confident in myself as far as a firearm goes, even though I was headspacing it. Second kit decided, well, I want a little bit more of a challenge. I'll go ahead and buy a complete kit that I'm going to have to populate rear sight block, gas block, front sight block, drill and pin everything, get it all lined up. See how I do on that. So I bought a kit from a company called Water Country. They offered $99 or $99 American made barrel. So I thought, 99 bucks? Okay, sure, why? I'll give it a whirl. The original Romanians back then were like 150 or plus or something. I may be wrong on that. I'm trying to remember. Like I said, this was four, four and a half, five years ago. Got the kit in, came with the American main barrel, looked pretty good. Yeah, all right. Started pressing everything on, doing all the stuff like you're supposed to or like I did with my other kit, other than I was populating the rear sight block, gas block, front block, uh, sight block, which you're having to constantly set up and put pressure on to get it all in, pressed in place. All barrels will flex just a little bit when you start putting that kind of pressure on. Flexing is all right, bending is where you don't want it. Well, that's where I had a problem, it bent. I was looking at it, it's like, oh crap, I knew this was gonna happen the second I tried to do it myself. Yeah, here we go. I screwed up. But I still took it and shot it. It worked. As long as there's not a kink in the barrel, it doesn't matter if that barrel's completely, it will shoot. Well, it shot, shot way to the left. Oh, great, all right, I'll replace the barrel. So I purchased an original Romanian barrel got it in, took everything off the $99 American made barrel and thought, well, I can't really screw it up any more than it already is. Let's put it in the lathe to see if I can bend it back. What the heck? Put it in the lathe up there at work. Had it sticking out all oh, about yay so, a couple inches. Well, I'll tap it with a piece of brass to start out just to see how much force this is going to take. I figured the press is putting a lot of pressure on there. I'm going to have to put a lot of pressure to try to bend it back because I didn't know how hard they were. Hit it with a piece of brass, bang, that thing just bent right over. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> That's not right. I mean, I work in metals and stuff like that as far as machine work, tool and die and everything. It's like, that shouldn't, uh, that just doesn't seem right. So I decided, well, let's check it right quick. I do have a Rockwell hardness tester. Now, at where I work at, we check overall hardness and not surface hardness because our parts that we do the tooling are 58 to 62 Rockwell, usually D2, A2, stuff like that. A little bit less for like H13 and stuff for molds or whatever. But anyway, so our checker there, that Wilson checker is set up, calibrated for C-scale. It gets checked every year. Every December, a guy comes in, certifies it, wham, gets a new sticker on it. We're good to go. Now, we hardly ever use it because we have a professional heat treater. They certify, yes, this is what it is. It's within your spec that you want. When we have a problem, something seems to deform way too early or it seems soft, we can go with our checker, check it right quick, let them know, hey, we've got a problem. Okay, and they usually take care of it. It's only happened a couple of times. But I'm usually the only one using that as far as checking the barrels. You know, I go on there and check that, check my receivers after I heat treat them. Because I have a, a heat treat oven there at work that only gets used when I do my stuff. But anyway, I have a tendency to ramble, I'm sorry. This is how I got into doing the very first test. And I thought, well, I'll show, hey, look. And I kept that ESS barrel for several years until I made my very first video on AK barrel hardness. Like I said, that barrel from ESS was from four and a half, five years ago. That does not mean that this was a, a brand new barrel today that you'll, you'll have a problem with this. Not necessarily. A couple of other guys I've uh, talked with have had the same problem with an ESS barrel. Now, how do I know mine was an ESS barrel? Like I said, I bought it from a water country. 
And I called them to let them know what the problem was with the barrel, hoping maybe, well, we'll send you another barrel, even though you probably screwed it up. We won't get that lucky. But uh, they said, we don't make the barrels. We purchased them from ESS. I was like, oh, okay. Well, don't they ESS make barrels for like ARs and M4s and stuff? Well, that's not good. They should know what they're doing. Maybe it was just a bad batch. Figures my luck. I'm a Murphy's Law kind of guy. Yeah, it's going to happen. But anyway, I've had that barrel for a while. Decided, well, I'll check. You know, I checked the original Romanian barrel. It checked about 22 to 25. Now, I don't check all up and down the length of the barrel, like you might see in the rock roll hardness test number two or barrel hardness test number two. I only check in one section where it's balanced because if you put pressure too much on one side or the other, you can really jack that thing up. Different coatings on there can screw it up, you know, if you got scale from heat treating, nitride, you know, any kind of hard coating on the outside can screw it up. But it's my understanding that the nitride on a barrel as far as 4140 or 4150, and I might be wrong on this, only penetrates about half a thousandth to a thousandth, maybe a little more. It varies with different metals that it's, you know, get treated with nitride and how it's that nitride is done and like it will vary in depth. As far as the barrel goes, you won't need a whole bunch just for the wear resistance. So as far as you shooters go, nitride, chrome line, stuff like that, that's for wear resistance. It's not going to make the barrel harder or tougher. Well, it might make it tougher. I don't know. Anyway, I only did that, the test, as far as from a builder's point. You know, oh, if it's too soft, it might bend on you, you'll have problems. It will shoot. A soft barrel will shoot just fine. It will wear out a little quicker, in my opinion, as far as the wear resistance because, you know, it's soft. So, all you guys who both are just buying guns off the shelf or from a company, this and that, and you're worried about how hard the barrel is, that's not going to affect you, really. You're going to want the chrome lined or nitride. You'll be just fine. Even with a soft barrel, most of you guys would never put enough rounds down the pipe to really make a difference. But that's how I got into checking. I checked the original Romanian barrel, checked that barrel, and I was like, wow, look at the huge difference between those two. So that's an old barrel. That does not necessarily equate to if you buy an ESS barrel right now, oh, it's up in the air, you might get a soft one. Anybody could have that. It could just have been a bad batch. I don't know. That's why I wanted to make this little video here to let you guys know that that wasn't a new production barrel from ESS. That's an old one. Like I said, it's just from a builder's point of view of, well, if it's really soft, you could have a problem. Or if you send it to these guys, yeah, it's probably going to bend because they drive over them. <laughs> but anyway, that's why I made the videos. People from AK Files wanted a second one. Oh, and everybody, test a Green Mountain Barrel, you know, because it's, oh, it's the bee's knees. Of, and it's very nice quality. I always kind of shied away from them because they're a little expensive. A little more expensive than what you would buy an original Romanian barrel, but you can't get the Romanian barrel anymore. So whatever. That's why I ended up doing these videos. 